This is Bloomberg Markets. Let's talk about business at the box office. Theater giant Cineplex just reported a big pickup in revenue in its latest quarter, up nearly 50% as moviegoers make their way back to the cinema. And there is still the summer blockbuster schedule ahead. Ellis Jacob is the CEO of Cineplex, and he joins us here in the studio. It's nice to see you. So nice it is very busy for you guys these days. How would you characterize what's been happening with the business? The uh, box office is coming back. The optimism in the business has increased uh, dramatically, and there's a lot of great product. We just came back from CinemaCon, which is the uh, annual uh, movie convention, and there was a lot of good product. And one of the most uh, positive things I would think that came out is that all the studios are committed to a theatrical release. As opposed to during Streamers, the pandemic when yeah. everybody was trying to figure out. I mean, do you think that streaming story has, like the ship has sailed there? There seems to be a lot of uh, revisiting the, 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 the business model changes that people were pushing for so long. Yeah, I think it's subsided. And you're mm. even seeing companies like Apple and Amazon looking at basically theatrical, uh, the theatrical releases. release. And yeah. the movie Air from Amazon did quite well at the movie theater. So you, you're basically also working with these technology companies Correct. with theatrical releases as yeah. well. Um, okay, so you, you mentioned you just got a, a, a sneak peek at some of the upcoming movies. I mean, how would, you, how would you describe what you think the summer box office is gonna look like this year? I'm very optimistic about mm -hmm. the summer box office. There's just about a big movie every week for the next uh, 12 to 14 weeks, and uh, that's really exciting. And, uh, you know, it all uh, continues as we move forward. And our guests are really keen to come back uh, to the theaters. And it all started in April with Super Mario's that uh, gave us a great lift as we move forward. John Wick did really well for us. So there's a couple of big movies that have done well. Okay. Well, hey, Keanu, right? We, uh, we, yeah. we love our Canadians. Uh, speaking of Canada, we've got a new movie in this country tied to a well-known name, Research in Motion and Blackberry. Um, you know, last time we spoke with you about some of the international films that have been coming to the box office here, and that's been part of your strategy. But when you can have a film, a homegrown movie, um, is that exciting for you? Yes, it is, and the story is uh, great. And, uh, you know, when I saw the movie, I was really uh, upbeat about it. Now, will it do well around the rest of North America? It would be, you know, a question mark. But in Canada, uh, we are hoping it does well, and we've done a number of uh, screenings, and uh, it's been uh, received quite positively. And uh, this week, we are opening at and the book club which, uh, you know, and then we've got Fast 10, and there's a lot of movies coming as we move forward into May and end of June. All right, so a, a lot of movies to watch for. The, um, the uh, you mentioned, I mean, Hollywood. The, 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 the writer's strike is kind of an interesting moment for the industry, um, especially since you've got, I, I guess, within the creative community, um, these themes like artificial intelligence uh, that are creating some tensions between studios and writers, you know, where, where do the ideas originate? Do you, how closely are you watching what's, what's happening on the, on the strike front? Yeah, I've been look, looking into it and making sure that, uh, you know, what is going to be the impact. Now, through my career, we've had two strikes and both of them actually were Pretty, uh, one was uh, 100 days and the other one was, was longer. But uh, a couple of years later, the box office was actually higher post-strike than it was uh, pre-strike. So, Interesting. Yeah, so you don't see a major impact in the exhibition business unless the strike goes on for over a year uh, or more. And one of the great things for our business today is we've diversified into the location-based entertainment. We've diversified into player one amusement groups. So we've got revenues from different parts now. And in addition to that, we have a lot, like you said, international product. Yeah, so, and these event spaces, which I mean, obviously right. during the pandemic, that was complicated, the theaters and having event spaces, but those are those yeah, are Yeah, but they're coming back and they are very strong and they're doing extremely well, as we saw this past quarter. They were both record numbers for us. I mean, us. For, for people who keep hearing about recession worries and all that kind of stuff, too, what would be your message? I mean, what do you see in your business right now? We uh, have not uh, felt the impact. And, uh, you know, historically, the last two recessions, movie attendance actually went up. And the reason being, we are a very close and, uh, you know, uh, reasonable uh, entertainment experience compared to going to some of the other events. 
So um, sounds like you're firing on many cylinders right now. Um, when you were speaking with the analysts uh, about the business uh, as part of the quarterly results, um, there was a reference to the to the stock value, uh, right. the valuation of the company, how it compares to maybe some of your peers. You, you do feel like you trade at, at a discount. Is that, is that fair to say? Yes. I mean, uh, you know, we were a very strong uh, business with the dividend and, uh, you know, things changed with... Uh, our uh, Cineworld deal not uh, closing, and then we had the issue of COVID. But uh, we feel, given the diversity, our position in the business, there's a lot of opportunity. And uh, we need our Canadian investors and foreign investors to uh, look at our great comparison to our peers and give us the appropriate uh, multiples for the value of our company. I mean, outside of just operating, which you're clearly focusing on that, are there ways to unlock some shareholder value that you're, you're seeking here? Well, one of the ways, and eventually I'd like to get that back, is the dividend, because that was a big driver of our stock in the past. And uh, we need to fix our balance sheet, and then I'd love to be able to you know, reinitiate a, a small dividend and continue to uh, grow the business like the past. So if there are more, you know, Super Mario Brothers that are punching above their way at the movie theater, then maybe there's a dividend opportunity. Down yeah, the road, we'll all be thing. happy. But again, the important thing is uh, fixing the balance sheet and making sure the debt levels are appropriate and then looking at how do we get back to where we were and do it quickly. Okay, Ellis is